Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a real close look at the new Warcry Red Harvest that was revealed today in the Warhammer Day online preview. In this video, I thought it'd be fun to head over to the Warhammer community site and take a look through the article in full so we can see all the best images for the new Warhammer Warcry Red Harvest. So here we are at the Warhammer community site. The date is 30 of October and this article has literally just gone up. I've just posted the video for the online preview that we saw, but now I thought it'd be cool just to take a little bit more time going through everything for this awesome looking set. And it's been a while. We've been waiting almost a year since the last Warcry product came out. And I think it was well worth the wait because this just looks awesome. So let's get started. And as we scroll down, we get our first glimpse at some new artwork for the game. And this looks like just so good. Um, wait till you see all the terrain and everything. It's fantastic. But right away, I'm getting a hero quest vibe. I think everyone's going to pick up on that for sure. And um, that probably isn't done by mistake. Or, or we could kind of look at him as some kind of emo barbarian, I guess. But either way, it just looks fantastic. So let's carry on through the article and we'll break it all down. So in this new Warcry Red Harvest, we're going to get a box full of new miniatures, new terrain. The rules are going to be the same. So the rules haven't changed, but there's going to be a few new ones in there just to incorporate this new terrain, apparently. So that's really interesting. And um, so we're going to get everything we need in this game box. They said in the online preview that this is a standalone game almost. You don't need any of the other things that came before for Warcry. And although the book looks different, it has got the core rules in it. So that was really interesting. And then we had the video. So let's play the video and then we can just talk about it a little bit before moving on to the rest of the article. So here we go. We've seen this guy already before, but now and this one, we saw this one in the previous videos that have just given us some little teasers. But now let's find out about the entire box set. And here's all that terrain we've been looking forward to. It's going through very fast, each clip. But here we get to see some of the other miniatures. And they look really great facing off against each other. I love the terrain. I think it's fantastic. That Sorceress is amazing. Wait till you see that up close. The skeletons on spikes that we're used to with Warcry. And um, really looking forward to this. The Tarantulous Brood is one of the warbands. And they look great. And then we've got the Dark Oath Savages which really remind me of the Godsworn hunt. So I'm really glad they've gone for that theme. I think these two opposing warbands and this terrain make for a great box set. So that's the introductory video. We get to see all of the Red Harvest in full. And so this is set in the shadow of the Varen Spire, Archeon's monolithic fortress at the center of the eight mortal realms. So we're still within the eight points here and the narrative continues. And in the tormented plains that stretch out around it, the realm stone Varanite is mined by hordes of enslaved mortals. And they told us in the preview that this Varanite is going to have some effect on the fires if they land on it. So that's going to be really interesting to get those new rules that really bring the terrain into the game. So looking forward to finding out more about that. But here we've got the box art and this looks awesome. Again, we've got that character on the front, very reminiscent of Hero Quest going up against what looks like the Broodmaster with a strangely small arm popping out of the side. Um, a bit of a creepy arm for sure. And then you can see some of the other great characters in the background. So really nice look. They've really stuck to this whole like vibe that they've gone for with previous editions of Warcry. So certainly haven't disappointed. And I love that they haven't come away from the rules and haven't come away from the aesthetic of it all as well. And as we scroll down, we get to see the whole set all laid out and there's lots going on here and it's really interesting that this realmstone varanite that is mined by the tarantulas brood they're using this to try and gain an extra arm or leg or it tells you here in the article that just one touch can give you that extra arm or even a head um, or simply turn you into a full-blown chaos spawn so that's going to be really fun to see how that plays out in the game as well so that's a great way to bring in the Tarantulous Brood into Warcry and introduce them. I think that's a really good narrative to play along with. And I like that the Dark Oath Savages are pretty much there just to take them out and kill as many of them as they can. Maybe just to collect some trophies. 
um, to cleanse the area of any other warbands. So I think that's really fun. And as someone pointed out in a previous video, and I wish I'd taken down the name, so sorry, I can't give you a shout out here. They pointed out that all the different parts on the model that we got to see about a week ago look like different parts from different models from different warbands in Warcry. So they could well be trophy hunters. And I think that'd be a fun narrative to play anyway. And so let's have a closer look at this terrain. So we've got lots of height, lots of ladders going up and down. So that's really going to play into the dynamic movement of Warcry, which is its kind of main feature for me. It's really fun just to be able to climb, jump around and be rewarded for it, especially with the Corvus Cabal. When you use the height, you jump down, you're going to get those abilities and extra um, like things you can use in battle because of that. So I think the terrain, perfect for Warcry, looks really great. Big platform. And then we've got the taller platforms with those um, like mine and pumps. And then we've got some bits that we've seen before, like the spikes with the skeletons on and the wooden like logs tied together to make some little bridges to go from one platform to another. We've also got that flow, almost like a conveyor belt for the Realmstone Varanite to go along. And you can see in the back that it looks like that's modular. So we can probably build that in lots of different ways, I imagine. And so we can have that running across across the battlefield, maybe even split it in half or just going around in any kind of shape. And so that's a really good feature and quite a lot of terrain here, actually. It's really going to fill up the board. And I think we could certainly use all those little bits of terrain from Catacombs or the main starter set if you've got it as well. And the board looks fantastic. Really great looking board. I'll be interested to see what's on the other side. And so hopefully that will be revealed very soon. And the tokens look really good. So we've got all the same kind of tokens that we're used to. So that's nothing's changed. So they said that the rules haven't changed. So everything should look the same. Maybe some different colours, perhaps. But from looking at it, it looks like we've got the chaos red theme there. The dice are the same dice we got in the catacomb set. So that's great. And we've got the fighter cards and the ability cards. So I'm really happy they've carried on including those. I thought they might go down the route of just sticking to using the fighter cards in the books. But it's brilliant that they've continued this for Red Harvest. So really happy about that. And then we've got the Red Harvest book. Now they did say that all the core rules are included and they haven't changed from the original. So that's going to be good. Hopefully they've updated it though since all the erratas have come out. So hopefully it'll be a really up-to-date version and include those new rules for some of the terrain. So it looks quite thin there in the image. Um, so whether there is a core book as well and they just haven't included it, I'm not sure. Um, but hopefully it's just all in one book this time, then that would be nice and easy. But it is a standalone game, they said, and you don't need any other previous editions of Warcry to be able to play this. Now let's have a look at these miniatures. And first we've got the Tarantulas Brood, so we can get a really nice close-up look now. And this is the one we've seen already, the Broodmaster. We're used to him, and he's got this other guy behind him with this pretty interesting weapon. And I love how they're all hooded with these cool like tarantula claws coming out. So the legs and the almost the tips of the legs look fantastic. He's got another spear on the back, maybe with some venom on there, who knows? And he's got all this kind of wraps that look a lot like um, thick bindings of web all wound together. That looks really awesome. They've gone for this nice orange, purple and green color, which is like a classic combo. And I think that works really nicely. Um, so. I'm a little bit tempted to change the orange up, maybe, just to mix. I'm going to think about that. I'm not sure yet, um, but I might change that a little bit to some different colours. So we'll have to wait and see. But for the first two, they look awesome. Now let's have a look over here. Great poses, some really good action poses, just like all the warbands for Warcry. They've done such a great job on the, on the warbands that they've made specifically for Warcry. And so these certainly don't disappoint. Um, look fantastic. I think they've done it brilliantly. The way they've painted these kind of grids on there, I wonder if there's any actual grooves or if that's all done freehand. But if there is grooves, I think a little bit of dry brushing would bring that up nicely. And so another two great ones. What else we got here? And so, yeah, we continue with the theme. So these all look quite similar. Apart from the Broodmaster, the, these five that we've seen as well as him are pretty similar. And so, yeah, not they've got a lot of these spears, though. So I wonder if they can have some ranged attacks as well as up close. So that's be uh, good to find out. Then we've got two more here. So we're going to get 10 all together. So that's great. These two look a little bit different, some different weapons. We've got a kind of flail on the end of this uh, spiked weapon and some interesting looking 
pole with a sword handle and then an axe coming out of the, the top. That's great. Looks like we've got some shurikens here. So this is cool as well. So that's a good weapon we haven't seen yet in um, Warcry. Well, at least I don't think we've seen it. And then we've got these two. I like these two, especially the one on the left. This is probably my favourite after the Broodmaster. I think he looks really great. And um, it's got that real cool dominating pose. Reminds me a little bit of one of the fighters from the Scions of the Flame. So he certainly looks a little bit like that. But um, yeah, really great looking models. I like how this one's got slightly different headpiece at the back. Um, but all these bindings are awesome. Really look like kind of spider ninja fighters. Right, now let's go down here and have a look at the Dark Oath Savages. Or Savage, yeah, Savages, not Savages, Dark Oath Savages. And again, some great models. Uh, this guy, the chieftain looking figure, is fantastic. And then here, maybe a second in command. Looks pretty ferocious. And again, I'm loving all these little, what could be trophies from different warbands. Here looks like the Immolator Mask. We've got beaks, so like uh, maybe the Corvus Cabal have taken some punishment. And so, yeah, this big beast, I don't know what that's taken from, but could be from something pretty cool. And these could be Canine Shadow Stalkers now. So that's really interesting. And this is another different belt buckle. And you'll see a few different ones as we go through the miniatures. So they certainly started off with two great ones, a really good look, and definitely in line with the Godsworn Hunt and the Spire Tyrant. So I think, yeah, really good, really liking this. And then if we move along, we'll see some more. This one looks like we've got an axe and a spear. The face looks a little weird, the faces on these. They look a little bit small for the body almost, on that one especially, a little shrunken head going on maybe, but some different belt buckles, which I'm really like that theme running through it. I think the swords are really good, classic kind of barbarian swords. They look fantastic. But he, yeah, this has got to be throwing axe with another throwing axe there. And so maybe some extra range. And then we've got the spear as well. So definitely attacking from range. We should be looking at some toughness four here with a shield. So that's always good. And then what's next? Ah, these two are fantastic. This one looks awesome. But potentially one of my favourites is the Sorceress, who's got no eyes except for this one that she's got in her hand. And that's what she's doing all her seeing with. So that is really weird and awesome. And I love all the beaky skeletons. Just class. And then on the back here, whatever that is, just looks great. So that is one awesome model that I can't wait to get and paint. But this one is pretty fantastic too. Some really good weapons. Uh, again, a different belt buckle. All these little runes hanging off. Is a really nice touch and those barbarian boots leather straps and stuff is just great he's even got some spikes coming out of his head and face so i think these two models brilliant the first two and these two amazing the shrunken head one uh probably not my that's probably my least favorite out of all of them um but the one if we go back that one there with the shield is great but these two are just brilliant and then the final two oh no we've got four more to look at so this one, we've got a Conan, the barbarian pose, but as a female. And then this one here as well with the, what looks like the Cruel Boys belt buckle. And this could maybe be something Beast of Chaos-like. Lots of skulls again, some nice double axes, a double-handed axe. And so lots of different weapons here. So this is really good to see as well. And then we've got our emo hero quest barbarian there and another one with the axe and shield. So we've got an axe and shield. So I wonder if, how many different uh, weapon options we can choose for these fighters. So I can't wait to see exactly what we can equip them with, whether it is what you see here or whether you'll get a few options. Like normally you'd get a couple of options on some of them. And so, yeah, be interested to see that. But this guy looks fantastic. So I think there's some really good models in here and a great warband altogether. So that's our two warbands, some really great models there. We haven't seen the spider swarms yet. They weren't included in those pictures. We might see them as we scroll down. But here we're going to get another good image of that terrain and seeing them in action. And it tells us in the article here that like any good chaos worshipper, the Dark Oath Savages respect might above all else. With rippling muscles, giant weapons and more loincloths than you can shake a runestone at, they wade into battle seeking glory either in victory or by a suitably worthy death. And these two warbands clash over abandoned Varanite mines, where the tarantulas brood hunt for the remaining deposits of Realmstone, while the Dark Oath savages 
presumably just fancy a good scrap. So there we go. So yeah, really good setting. Love this. And then here we can have a really good look at the terrain now. So these mines are the perfect terrain to battle over with sluices for transporting Varanite, crisscrossing with scaffolding, gangways and strange machinery to fight on and around. So you can just see there's loads of places here we can put our fighters as they're battling on the top of here on these little uh, platforms. We've got this huge platform that could be like a centerpiece or maybe we can split it up. I think I'd be looking to build it so that it could be separate. And then we've got all of this as well. You can climb on that. Maybe you can run along the edge here. I'm not seeing any models on that. So it might just be a case of jumping over it. Maybe we can put a couple of little bridges. I like all these terrain pieces, how they've kind of use that as well to work that in but it's this that it looks like you can build in lots of different ways and the board just looks really good like this so really nice contrast to the existing boards we've got for Warcry so all up I think these, this terrain is just amazing it just looks so good and I'm really loving it I think they've done a great job here and um, that's going to be so fun to play on and then as we go down we can just see some more pictures of them in action and then at the bottom, we're now at the end of the article. So this is all the news we're going to get for now. It says that there's a new double-sided gaming board, new tokens, dice and Warcry cards. It's both a game in a box and a super-sized expansion for existing Warcry fans. It contains everything a new player needs. But then it says, and when the time comes to expand your experience, you can further explore the Bloodwind spoil with the Warcry core book and other expansions. So... It might have the rules in it, but perhaps it hasn't got all of the different campaigns and things in there that the Warcry core book had, maybe. But then that wouldn't make sense. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to be in this book then. Uh, the rules have to be in there because it is a standalone game on its own game in a box and a big expansion. And so, yeah, I think we need to find out a bit more about the book and the contents for sure. Because otherwise, why would you need the Warcry core book on top of that? So yeah, need to find out more about that. But otherwise, I think that's it. It doesn't give us any dates about when this is coming out. Uh, it just said it's going to be a bloody good time for all involved. And it's just one part of the Warhammer Day preview. So yeah, we're not going to get any dates just now. But um, I'm hoping it's this year. It's got to be this year. What we've got November and December still to go. So if we could get this in time for Christmas, I think that'd be awesome fun. So it didn't show us those spider swarms, but they're definitely revealed in the preview and here you can see them on the board there and here's a close-up so these are the pictures they showed us in the preview and these swarms look great we've got the big tarantula and then little tiny ones just crawling out of the ground so i think this is going to be fun and i'm looking forward to seeing what abilities come with these as well because i think these look terrific but that's pretty much everything we've got for now for the new Warcry red harvest as new products go, I think this is fantastic. Um, big fan of Warcry, as you know, I can't wait for this. But I'd love to know what you think about it. Are you happy with what they've done here? Are there any improvements you think they could have or should have made? And what is your favourite part about this new set? I'd love to hear what you think. So join in in the comments section below. It'd be great to hear from you. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.